What's going on guys and welcome to Rabbit Used Cars. You know, I get asked all the time, whether it be in messages or events or emails or God knows every other way people try to contact me about getting into flips, you know? And, you know, and there's a lot of people that do flips on YouTube and things like that. And I mean, naturally, hell, I'm one of them. But, you know, you start thinking about it, you know, and you've got this, just like, it's weird, like how they do it. It's kind of like this. They're starting here and telling you all about it. But how do you get to here? And that's the problem I've noticed with a lot of these YouTube flips is they don't show you how they got to here. They just want to start here and tell you all about it. Whether it be, you know, John Ross, you know, jamming an LS motor in a hunk of Rolls Royce, or whether it be, you know, Ed, Freddie, and Hoovy playing with their cheap supercars and things like that. But how do you get to that? You know, and I get and I get the questions all the time. And of course you see me, you know, with nice cars all around and, and flipping those. And I mean I'm to the point where hell I can buy just about what I want to. But, you know, I gotta think about get to thinking about this because I get asked all the time about, hey, I want to get started flipping, but I ain't got a whole lot of money or, you know, I want to get into this, but how? And, you know, and I started thinking about some of the ways that I got the capital up to get started. You know, sometimes you got to think outside the box. Like I say, if you want to go back to my Vin Wiki video about the windows, I traded, you know, a little van that nobody wanted at the auction for a trailer load of old single pane windows. They say, you know, I'm in the home decor business, made thousands of dollars doing that. You know, sometimes you got to think outside the box to get the capital up to do what you want to do. And, you know, and it's, you know, that was a extreme case and that one worked out extremely well in my favor. And they all don't work as good as that. But if you got an eye, you could do some digging around and there's lots of ways to make capital. You know, I'm sure it's already caught your eye, you know, is this right here. And we're going to get to that in just a little bit. But, you know, back to, to getting your capital. You know, you got you to gotta be smart. You know, you got to do your homework to recognize that diamond in the rough. You know, whether it be an ad on Marketplace or Craigslist or, or somebody you know and, and, and getting the money up. You know, and a lot of people don't have fifteen hundred, two thousand, three thousand dollars to buy that cheap flip car. They don't have, you know, sponsors throwing parts and money at them to build these cars. And and I think that, you know, a lot of people, you know, you, you end up watching their videos, but really and truthfully, you really don't know how they got there. And I don't know how they got there, but I know how I did. So, and it was all from little flips and taking chances and, you know, experimenting with different things, being able to diversify and get into different directions. So, takes us to this. And, you know, we got this little Fox Body Mustang sitting here and, and you know, and they, and they kind of go hand in hand. And you're thinking, right, what the hell's a Fox Body Mustang got to do with a hook go kart? A lot of the business, especially with collector cars and collectible things in general, has to do with people wanting things when they were young, they were popular. Like this, if I had this in high school, dude, I'd, I'd, it'd have been perfect. I would have loved to have this car in high school. This thing is like a 90s time capsule. And that's why we picked it up. And it pulls on somebody's heartstrings where, you know, back in high school, they might couldn't afford a car like this. But now, you know what, kids are growing up. We got some extra income coming in. I'm gonna buy that toy I always wanted. And we found this super clean LX Mustang. And we're gonna talk about that later. Right now we're talking about this. And this one right here kind of tugs at my old sentimental heartstrings. All right, so back in 1982, you gotta think about it. NHRA, that was their heyday. Um, you know, Funny Car was huge in the early 80s. And I mean, I'm talking about way, I mean, John Force was still a young gun then. You know, your guys, Don Perdome, you know, the Mongoose McEwen, all these guys were your big dogs in Funny Car. Kenny Bernstein. To commemorate Don Perdome going 250 mile an hour. This is actually the Pepsi Challenger Trans Am in 1982. It was the very first drag car to run 250 mile an hour. And to commemorate that, they actually built 50 of these go-karts. This is where it kind of ties me into the story. In 1982, I was three years old. But... I remember it just like it was yesterday. 
when they were giving these carts away. They were never for sale. They were always promotionals, whether it be at a racetrack or something. Well, National Dragster, which was the drag racing magazine of the day. It was huge and one of those big paper magazines. And they had a big full page ad where they were giving away this cart. You know, my grandfather, I remember him tearing off the little entry form off the bottom and mailing it in. And he actually took the actual full page ad and hung it up in his garage at his house. And that, that thing was there all the way to the day he died. And I remember walking in the door and seeing that Trans Am sitting there, that Trans Am go-kart that he tried to win. You know, obviously I didn't win it, but it was just so cool. It's a childhood memory, I remember that. Well, you know, I've been thinking about this project for a long time, you know, getting started, you know, like a good come up project, a good flip to do with. And you know what, I could go buy a three or $4,000 car and make throw a few thousand into it and make more money off of it. But that's not really showing you anything. I mean, hell, if you got three or four thousand dollars, hell, anybody can do that. But this is the thing. I want to take hundreds and make thousands. So I got to play around on Marketplace and just dig around and looking at different things. And I'm looking at just all kinds of random stuff from cars to golf carts. I typed in go-kart and it pulled up 40 million racing go-karts. You know, every Joe Bob Bubba that was getting out of go-kart racing is there. And I ran across this. It was sitting in Asheville, North Carolina. I sent the guy, literally, I sent the guy a message. And, you know, of course, I checked his profile out. And there was a picture of a possum for his profile picture. So it's got to be an interesting character. Well, he messaged me back. He said, yes, I still got the cart. I said, I'd love to come look at it. He said, sure. So he sent me his address. GPS couldn't even locate the address. So he actually had to give me the address of an elementary school that was close to his property. And we had to kind of like go with handwritten directions from there. So anyway, he talked us into this place and we wanted this long dirt drive. Keep in mind, I drive a C71 Silverado and I damn near had to put this bad boy in low, four wheel low, just to get up the damn driveway. We pull up and I mean, this guy, He's got a junkyard like no other. And I'm talking about Volkswagens, you know, buses, Audis, all kinds of Euro junk everywhere sitting around. There was even a few Lotuses laying around. And, and it even into you know, some German cars and stuff. I mean, like this guy had, you know, Mercedes and all kinds of stuff floating around, a few Alfa Romeos, whatever, just all kinds of, of, of import stuff like junkyard. This place was huge. And then he's had this old ramshackle barn. It was over to the left-hand side of the property at the back. You know, we're driving down this little pig trail between all these busted up Euro cars and just junk everywhere. And finally, I see this older guy walk out. Like this guy's got every everything you would ever want in a junkyard. As long as you're not looking for straight teeth, Wi-Fi, or running water, he's got what you need. He opens up a door on this barn, and lo and behold, sits this bad boy sitting there. The body was off of it, the motor was off of it, but he had all the pieces there. I did a little digging beforehand. I couldn't even find another one for sale. I actually found a body for sale. It's already sold. The last time I seen one sold was 2014, and it was in the rough, and they wanted $2,500 for it then. That's, you know, kind of neat. And you're like, well, Rob, you know, you said $2,500. That's not cheap. I bought this thing for 300 bucks. You know what? I just got a feeling with a little sweat equity and a few hundred dollars, we can turn this little barn turd into a diamond. I think it's going to be a fun project. We're going to bounce back and forth to it. You know, we're not going to, you know, flood you guys with go-kart building, but we're going to take you step by step. And we got some fun stuff lined up for this, and who knows? We may give this thing away. We may auction it off for charity or something like that. But I've got a friend of mine who's a very, very big name in the automotive memorabilia and just auctions in general for stuff like that. And he's actually going to come appraise this thing when we're done. I was telling him about he's already salivating to see it, but I don't want him see it quite yet. I want to bring them out when it's all done and give us a real value. I want to put my money where my mouth is and show you guys that a few hundred dollars and a little bit of elbow grease and you can make thousands. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit Used Cars.